I will mention this. There was, uh, and this is actually instrumental as it relates to me starting my own agency and leaving the big firms, is um, my my last post working for the big firms, I was in Dubai. I was in the Middle East. And I got this big position. And at the same time, simultaneously, I thought I was looking for being in uh, a, 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 a relationship. And both of those things happened simultaneously. I got recruited. I wanted to work internationally and then I wanted to be in a relationship and they happened at the same time. And um, so I'm in Dubai and the, the partner that I was dating at the time learns that his father was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. And so we had to send him back to the States and I'm out in the Middle East trying to figure out like, what am I doing with my life? I just uprooted my entire life from New York. I went to Dubai. I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with this person. And then I end up heartbroken. I end up questioning why was I in this position? And I took a leap of faith and I left. I would, but what, what I don't always get to share a lot and I'll share it here on this interview is that you're currently listening to re Perez who is a seasoned brand strategist, author, keynote speaker, and CEO of Branding for the People. Utilizing his diverse expertise in Fortune 500 level branding, forward thinking, design, and marketing best practices, Re has built a respectable reputation and proven track record for creating iconic and market leading brands across 100 plus different industries and professions. I am excited about my conversation with Re. It's pretty powerful and let's just, let's get this thing started. Let's go. Let's get after it. This is your superior self episode 91. Rebrand your story with branding icon Re Perez. Admit it. You aren't like them. You're not even close. You may occasionally dress yourself up as one of them and watch the same mindless television shows as they do, maybe even eat the same fast food sometimes. But it seems like the more you try to fit in, the more you feel like an outsider, watching the normal people as they go about their automatic existences. For every time you say club passwords like, have a nice day, or weather's awful today, huh? You yearn inside to say forbidden things like, Tell me something that makes you cry. Or, what do you think deja vu is for? Face it, you even want to talk to that girl in the elevator, but what if the girl in the elevator and the balding guy who walks past your cubicle at work are thinking the same thing? Who knows what you might learn from taking a chance on a conversation with a stranger. Everyone carries a piece of the puzzle. Nobody comes into your life by mere coincidence. Trust your instincts, do the unexpected, Find the Others. And that was written by Timothy Leary. I am obsessed with that quote. It has everything that I'm into, like written into it. Like it's it's crazy. I just saw this quote the other day on J, um, Jason Silva's Instagram. And I didn't even know this was written. I didn't even know anything about Tim or his work. But the more that I read about him and the more that I'm learning about him, it's like, man, this guy's pretty legit. And I apologize about the popping as I hear it in my headphones. I'm actually away for the Thanksgiving holiday and I have my travel kit with me and it's not the same as being in studio, so I apologize. The entire episode is not like this. The interview um, is actually pre-recorded, so the popping will not be in it, so don't worry about that. But going back to the quote is, like think about the relationships that we have with people and how generic they can be, how we don't see them for who they are. When we ask questions, you know, they're kind of like scripted questions. It's always how's the weather, team, sports, something of that nature. It's never really diving in and getting to know someone for who they are and what they may think or how they may feel about a certain subject. I think we need to connect more with people like stop being so generic and like ask some tough questions some uncomfortable questions i think the more that you connect with people it kind of changes your mindset it changes your habits it change it can change your life and the reason why i love to do this podcast is to be able to connect with people 
that have different thoughts, that have different beliefs and different experiences. And I'm going to learn something from them that I can apply to my life. And that's why I'm so excited about the journey and where it's going to take me. Because I don't, I don't know. Like two years ago when I started this process, I had this belief system that I thought was right. But as I meet more people and as I develop relationships, like everything has changed for me and it's exciting. I can't wait to, to learn where I may go next. It's, it's fulfilling to be honest with you. And I challenge you to do the same thing and ask the tough questions and and connect more and rebuild your thought process. Maybe even rebuild your life. Who knows? I mean, I mean, my guest today, Re Perez, has helped many companies change their story, change their image, and it has helped them as a company change their culture. So I'm excited about what Re can do for you today, just listening to a story and connecting with him on a different level. But before we get into the interview, I want to remind you that you can connect with me on all the social media platforms. Instagram at tdowns80, Twitter at downstray, and on Facebook at Trey Downs. Reach out, send me a message. You can also head over to my website, yourspiritself.com. Send me a message over there or sign up to get on the email list, which I will send you every episode directly to your inbox. And you'll never miss an episode. You'll never have, you'll never have to go to an app and download the next episode. It just automatically sends it right to your inbox, which is an easy way of keeping up with the show or if you don't feel like doing that you can text the word superior to 444-999 and that automatically signs you up for the email list so without further ado here is my conversation with the branding icon re perez what is up guys welcome back to another episode of your superior self tonight i am joined with re perez founder of Branding for the People Remix in the house. What is up, buddy? <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks, man. Thanks, Trey. Thanks for having me. Um, how perfect is your name for you, for what you do? Re, like <laughs> re, rebranding, like it's it's perfect. It, it, like you were born to do what you do. It, it sounds that way. And and that, consequently, I've also heard all the re-jokes <laughs> that have made fun of my name, but it does work in the context of business and professional for people who are looking to do a rebrand. I love that. So what are you up to? What's going on in your world today? Yeah, well, you know, we're we're working on some exciting projects, still building the agency and continuing to make our impact and and uh, just always looking at new innovative ways to uh, to get out there and, and share our message and impact more people's lives. I am working on a book, um, in the process of finalizing a book. And, um, and also just, uh, this is summertime around the time that we're shooting this, uh, recording. So, um, make, making time for, for family and friends and, and downtime as well. Mm. Well, I want to say, uh, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I know you've been busy, you know, traveling the world. Uh, how was your vacation? <laughs> This past vacation, to be honest, is I'm I'm part Filipino and part uh, Guamanian is what you call it. Uh, I'm American born, but my dad was in the U.S. Air Force, and he was stationed in the Philippines. Met our met my mom, and the reason I bring that up is because we went to the Philippines uh, for this family vacation, mostly to, for us to kind of go back and see where our mom grew up, uh, for my nieces and my nephew who's never been. They've also been American born, so. It was a really good time, a humbling time to kind of go and see sort of, you know, uh, a different country, to be honest. I mean, it's even though we're raised with Filipino culture, we're really mostly raised with American culture. And there's mm -hmm. a big distinction uh, between there and here. So but overall, it was good. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of good food, relaxing time and and um, um, definitely eye opening and humbling to be grateful for 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 the choices that my parents have made that led us to come here to be in the states that's awesome man yeah my wife she is uh part filipino and it's funny because i don't know how accurate this is but supposedly her great 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 grandfather might have been a king over there who got exiled so her, oh. her yeah her and her cousins always fight about who 
who is the princess to the to you know to the throne so i'm like great i married a exiled princess uh <laughs> with no gold or silver or anything cool like that you know like so i, I make fun of her uh about that but it, yeah That's hilarious. I mean, it's a small world you know what i mean like the over yeah. here in perry hall like um you know the filipino community is thriving i mean we have a, a ton of friends that are from the philippines and uh i got a small following over there um so shout out to them thanks guys for yeah. listening and downloading so re i heard you at cadre con you were your talk was uh about branding and marketing and it was very powerful and i was Thank amazed you. by some of the examples that you used in your in your talks in your, some of your slides in your slide deck you took some of these people's uh you know some of these companies brands and you transformed them like i mean complete 180 um what does mm. it ta- what does it take to do that like is it a gift or is it is it like a particular eye for creativity what is it perhaps it's a combination of both i mean i'd like to think that uh it definitely took some years of training and learning and sort of being coming a master of this craft called branding and at the same time i think that there's just some things that just intuitively or naturally come to me. But I I don't think that they're mutually exclusive. I think it really is a combination of like where my strengths lie, where my sort of, uh, depending on which sort of uh, scores you recognize or look at in terms of personality uh, or competency type tests. But I think I was just wired to to do branding. You know, uh, it's it's a lot left brain and it's a lot right brain and it's the intersection between the two for me, as a branding strategist, is like you really need to have both of those cylinders operating. And at the same time, I also have a degree in organizational behavior and communications. And so for me, branding is more than just logos and colors. And, and that's an aspect to branding, don't get me wrong. But it's about, it's about behavior and uh, psychology and linguistics and you know, language and, and all this sort of stuff that really creates a culture in our lives and and also, you know, inside companies for companies to go through a branding process. So I think it's a combination of the two. Mm. You have like this crazy, I mean, if you guys visit his site, brandingforthepeople.com, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You have this very, this brand that pops and you see it with your work. I know for an example that really stood out for me was you had a lawn care business and everybody's used to the greens and you know, the yellows, I guess. But I think it was, you used purple, right? For their brand. That's right. Um, which we even renamed the company to purple care from extreme lawn care, extreme with an X extreme lawn care to purple care. Talk (laughs) about owning a color, right? How, I mean, have they mentioned to you like any positives about that rebranding? Yeah, so the the official launch happened earlier this year, and uh, you know there are just a few neighborhoods over from me. I currently live in Austin, Texas now, um, but yeah, it's been a complete shift, not just within their entire organization, uh, but uh, also within their existing customers and uh, even their competitors paying attention and be like, "Whoa, what do they do?" Because they took their brand to an entirely new level. Well, what do you do to get into that flow state, into that state of mind where you can see that, you know, you can be creative and you can see things that other people don't? Yeah, uh, that's a really interesting choice of words, because for me, it is about um, having a flow state of really dialing in a few different things. I think it's dialing in who this company as a brand is trying to be. uh, And at the same time, who are they already, you know, like what is going to be true and authentic and credible to them. And at the same time, it's also looking at, uh, uh, them in the context of the competitive landscape, which is how can they be different? How can we get this brand to stand out from the competitors? And then finally, because even my own brand and my own agency, but also for our clients, it really is about impact. It's not just, I mean, listen, it, it's very easy to, to make money when you really think about it. It's actually easy to get a one-time client or customer, but that's not what we're about. We're about, and our clients are about making an impact. 
And that translates into a lot of other things like loyalty and retention and increased customer lifetime value to use some of these business terminology. But the third thing that we look at is really um, what, how does this company want to make its impact and how can I help them make their bigger impact? So it's the intersection of looking at, uh, to get into this flow state of looking at all the different data points of what, is, who are they trying to be? What are they, you know, who are they authentically trying to be? What makes them different and unique in the category and what makes them relevant or uh, impactful to the people that they're trying to, to impact and help. Mm. No, I love that. I, I think a lot of people don't really focus on how to be different, right? Like they get stuck on different things, like trying to niche it down to like their, their product and then like they don't focus on what makes them different really. Um, and I think that it has, to, like you just said, all, you know, authenticity, like you have to yeah. be really authentic with your brand. Um, and know what's really crazy is like, I, I feel like branding and marketing is totally different than what it used to be. Right. Like, um, I know, I think I was reading shoe dog, Phil, was it Phil Knight's book? And he's like, I never believed in marketing. And I think the, the way that the business world is going to, I think, I think marketing has, is more powerful now than it's ever been. Mm. Um, but why, why is that though? Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, you know, I would actually even argue uh, marketing and branding have become even more powerful than it's ever been. So just as a side note, so for me, I, I see the distinction between branding and marketing. I mean, mar branding is a marketing related discipline. Don't get me wrong. It's and it's distinct. And so I, I just think that branding is a precursor to marketing. Mm. Meaning so branding how I define branding. It's about creating. It's the process of creating a perception in the marketplace and defining How do you want to be perceived and then I look at marketing as a vehicle? And it's actually one of several vehicles to create a perception because there's other ways to create perception, right? It's through your own personal dress style through your um, social media through publicity and advertising and so the reason why I think both branding and marketing are becoming even more important is because it's no longer good enough just to compete or sell based on what you have to sell your products or your services or, you know, what you have to offer. It's about creating value in people's lives. And secondarily, it's also because if you think about information coming at us at a rapid speed, uh, and lots of it, <laughs> uh, brands that connect with their audiences on a deep emotional level is going to break through the clutter of the noise. It's going to capture attention. It's going to inspire people or provoke people or challenge people to take action, uh, not based on what they sell or what they offer, but the value that they're providing and the promise that they're uh, promising to ultimately help change or transform people's lives. Mm. And that's what people are buying. At the end of the day, I think we all buy from companies, or we buy products, or we buy services that are going to some way, shape or form trans transform our lives, however big or small. Mm. No, I agree. 100%. And I was going to ask you that I was going to say, how do you break through the noise? Um, and you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, it's your brand. And I, and I'm one of the, one of the, one of the many probably that didn't know the difference between branding and marketing. Um, I thought they were one in the same. Well, you're not alone. <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's kind of a, a common thing that I have to first educate a, um, a lot of people and, it, and it's not your it's not, it's no one's fault, really. It's just, to be honest, there's not a lot of, uh, let me, pro let me properly phrase this. There's probably more people in marketing than there are people in branding. Well, when did they, when did, like, has it always been divided or did, did all of a sudden, like at a certain time we, you know, someone in marketing decided, well, I'm going to start being more of a brand oriented company and diverge away from marketing as a whole? 
Yeah. So while I've been doing branding for quite some time, uh, there there is a generation before me that sort of were the original pioneers and founders of the branding industry that I've learned from. And one of my former mentors, who is one of those original pioneers, uh, laid it out to me this way. So branding originated from the idea first started out with product naming. So a company would go to a consultant or whatever, and they would say, can you help me name my product? And that became, uh, so branding was born, born out of product naming. And then, and then we're like, oh, well, now that you can name my products, can you name my company? So then it evolved to corporate naming or company naming. And then elevating the conversation to beyond just naming. So if you give a name, much like we give a name to a child or a puppy or a pet, whatever, is now you want to create an identity. Now you want to create a personality. And then so I, um, naming evolved into identity and then identity evolved into branding. So it was this evolutionary process that was born out of first getting the core of what am I going to call this product? And then what am I going to call this company? And then what is the identity of this company? And then not only what is the identity, but what is the brand? What is the perception that we want to create over time? Now this happened concurrently from what I understand, uh, where you had advertising and marketing, because when you think about it, advertising is made and marketing is by definition, they're, they're, they're the discipline, is designed to grab our attention today, right now. And a lot of times, particularly in advertising, they use sex to sell or they use fear to sell. And while that may work on an advertising and marketing level, when you take a step back and figure out, well, oh, wait a minute, is that authentic to my brand? Is my brand about being sexy? Is my brand selling sex? Or is my brand selling um, fear? And it's that line of thinking. It's like, huh, let's first get clear on what does our brand stand for? And then let's align all of our marketing and advertising uh, activities around that brand, around the perception we're trying to create over time. Does that make sense? Oh, it sounds like a science to me, man. You, you're like, seriously, like you have like, I'm writing everything you're saying down because it's like <laughs> phenomenal. Like when did this hit you? Like, was there a moment in your, in your career where you were like, this is what I want to do. Like this is, this makes sense to me. I, I figured it out. You know, I wish I could say that I had like this brilliant story of um, how I figured things out. But uh, you know, because if anything, for me, it sort of happened through an, iterative process. Uh, I was living in New York City. I was going to NYU and I started out as a graphic communications major. I thought I wanted to be a graphic designer because I had a really good design eye. But lo and behold, I was not the one that was going to be sitting behind the computer designing stuff. I just knew how to direct and look at design. So then I changed my career um, into um, understanding psychology. And at one point I wanted to be an industrial psychologist because I was fascinated with the, the way people think, the why people behave the way that they do. I was fascinated with language. I was actually a really shy person, um, a kid. Like uh, I couldn't speak articulately. I was always inspired and, and admired people on the news who could speak uh, so eloquently. And so I was fascinated with the, like public communications and language. And, and I just really, I think over time, I really saw the intersection of all these things coming into, uh, into play from how things look to how things sound, to what people say, to how people behave, that really created, and, and it, this cumulative experience created a perception in people's minds. And then I started to connect that in the business level. It's like, wow, we have 15 seconds to make a first impression. Hmm. And so how powerful is that for us to be able to kind of get organized around all of these things to impact and make the best first impression that we possibly can. Now, that being said, I, in my book, and, and I don't know if we even will have time to get into it, and maybe I'll touch upon it, but I have a deeper relationship with perception 
because I've, and, and I probably, you could probably relate to this and maybe a lot of people that are listening on this podcast or this interview is that, uh, particularly in our formative years in high school, we're all concerned about how people perceive us. We're all concerned about how our, our peers, you know, we all want to be accepted and liked and so forth. And that's just a process of growing up. And even for myself, I've always tried to figure out like, well, how am I perceived by other people? And at the same time, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't contradictory to who I am authentically. But anyway, I'm kind of giving you, it, it's really been a life's journey for me. And I think all the pieces of the puzzle started to come together to say, and, and it just showed up one day in my life that, that there's this discipline called branding. And I was like, wow, I never knew this thing existed. But when it did, when, it, when, I, when I met my former branding mentor, it just snowballed from there because all these pieces that I was acquiring as a kid and in college and living my life, all these things I was acquiring just fell into place. And I channeled that then into a profession and a career. Mm. So no. maybe that, maybe yeah, that, no, maybe no, I should that, turn that into a sexier story. But that's how it happened for me. Well, well I mean, <laughs> I, I like it. I mean, it, it's, I think it's a great story. I think it's, you know, I think it's the the story that everyone has. Like they're on this journey and they're trying to figure everything out. And then next thing you know, they meet somebody, and then voila! Now you have a mentor. Now you're going in a whole different direction that you were before. Like, how did you meet your mentor? Um, so I was working in a completely different industry. Um, I was actually consulting with a lot of the advertising, marketing, design firms uh, because I was really good at sourcing designers and under and and I was good at recruiting designers. And I ended up consulting with these companies and pairing them with creative directors. I was a connector, and I would connect these people with these companies, and then I would consult with them about how to how to staff and recruit and all that sort of stuff with their talent. And this one, when I decided to leave that position, I just knew there was something else for me out there. One of my clients was this boutique branding firm. And I said, hey, I just gave them a heads up. I was like, listen, just to give you a heads up, I'm leaving this company. I wanted to properly say goodbye and transition you to the next person who's gonna be helping you. And he said, you know, ironically, we were just talking about you two weeks ago and we were figuring, we were thinking about trying to figure out, we wanted to do something with you. We didn't know exactly what it was, but we wanted to do something with you. And I was like, all right, why don't I give you a call in a couple of weeks uh, when I sort of wrap up here and let's meet for coffee. And we did. And I think over the couple of months, um, we kind of formed this idea of this concept called brand culture. And uh, they said, well, why don't you head up this division within my branding company? Um, and um, it's called Brand Culture. So I led that. And so he just inevitably became my mentor as it relates to branding. I contributed to him in terms of understanding the social sciences behind branding, the psychology, um, you know, the, the purview that I had with uh, understanding organizational behavior and communications. And so it was a really good marriage at the time. So you know, maybe in some respects, he mostly mentored me around branding. And, and in some respects, I sort of mentored him, well, <laughs> if you will, around this other aspect to branding. But um, the student anyways. becomes the teacher. huh? That's right. <laughs> um, that's pretty crazy. Like, how lucky is that? I'm not saying you're lucky that you're success, but I'm saying, like, how lucky are you that you're leaving this company? And then next thing you know, you fall into your next venture. And now look where you're at. Like, like, uh, call it like the universe, but it's just like, it's crazy how things work out. It is pretty crazy. And, and it ironic that you said that exact comment because I just finished reading this book called the, um, the surrender experiment by Michael Singer. And, uh, in short without, you know, doing a whole stint cause you could probably do a whole interview <laughs> about this book. But it's like when you sort of surrender to what the universe, God, higher source, the, you know, um, what the universe has in store for us, um, you kind of allow life to unfold in a very beautiful way 
rather than trying to resist things. Now, don't get me wrong. When I was going through this process, you know, there was a lot of pivots and changes and things that I've done that are like, I don't know if I'm on the right path. But then you pull yourself out of this. And I look back on like I'm 47 now. So like I look back on my life and I'm like, wow, all these little pieces somewhere above here (laughs) was like knew what was happening and saw the bigger picture. So it is kind of amazing. It still it still shocks me. So in that in that book, he just really talks about his whole life has been things to show up that he wasn't even expecting. And it always came at the right time. I love book recommendations. I actually read his book on Un- the untethered soul. Yeah. Uh, I that's gifted next it. on my list. Oh dude, it is a phenomenal. I gifted it. Like I give it out all the time and people are like, stop giving me books. But yeah, I, I love <laughs> that book. I-, I totally, totally recommend the untethered soul by Michael. Singer. Someone told me to, re- someone told me to read the surrender experiment first, then the untethered soul. Mm, I, so, I, I need to read that one too. So that, I'm definitely writing that down. Um, yeah. So I think those are both good recommendations for the people listening on this interview. <laughs> mm, well, speaking about like some of the times where you were kind of like in a in a in a rut, um, like was there any at any point in your career or life where you were like, man, I don't know, like if I can do this anymore. Like, did you ever just question like where you're at? Like, did you ever question yourself? Like, question your path? Like, the, the journey didn't make sense. Like. And if it and, and, and what cleared that up for you? Like what created what created more clarity? Yeah, um, there were a few different moments in my life. Maybe I'm the kind of person and maybe you can relate to this or maybe a lot of people can relate to this is that, you know, when you when you have a, a little narrative in the back of your head of like, I'm not X enough or I'm not this enough that you're always kind of striving to be like, you know, what can I do? What's, you know, whatever. And so you question yourself, but I will mention this. There was a, uh, and this is actually instrumental as it relates to me starting my own agency and leaving the big firms is, um, my, my last post working for the big firms, I was in Dubai, I was in the middle East and I got this big position. And at the same time, simultaneously, I thought, I was looking for being in uh, a, 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 a relationship. And both of those things happened simultaneously. I got recruited, I wanted to work internationally and then I wanted to be in a relationship and they happened at the same time. And um, so I'm in Dubai and the, the partner that I was dating at the time learns that his father was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. And so we had to send him back to the States. And I'm out in the Middle East trying to figure out, like, what am I doing with my life? I just uprooted my entire life from New York. I went to Dubai. I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with this person. And then I end up heartbroken. I end up questioning why was I in this position. And I took a leap of faith. And I left. I would, But what, what I don't always get to share a lot, and I'll share it here on this interview, is that it was a really dark time for me. I've never gotten shaken up on an, on a breakup in that kind of way ever in my life. And you could say I was probably borderline depressed. Here I am in the Middle East working for a company, unhappy, unfulfilled. And there were three books that have completely transformed my life during this process. And I don't know how I stumbled across it. Talk about the universe. But I'm in Dubai and I'm in the largest mall in the world called the Dubai Mall, right? And I was like looking at a bookstore. I'm trying to figure out something. I'm like looking at the self-help section, (laughs) something. (laughs) And I stumble across The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And I can't explain it to you, but I picked up the book and it was a page turner for me. Hmm. Like every, all the words were just speaking to me at that moment. And because I was so much in pain around where I was right now. I was like in pain around what the past was. I was pain about where I was heading in my future. And this book kind of saved me in a way to just be present with where I am right now so that I don't miss the opportunities of what could possibly be next. And, and then it brought me on a path of before I figured out what was next in my life, uh, I needed to figure out. I needed to resolve 
a deeper issue, which is around self-love. And so then that turned me the, uh, to another book called The Path to Love by Deepak Chopra, and then The Art of Happiness by the Dalai Lama. And these three books, I attribute these three books, among other activities that I did in this whole journaling and meditating and trying to figure out life for six months, I even went on a spiritual retreat in Sedona. These three books and this process really put me on a path of this is what I needed to be doing in my life. And this is whatever I do is going to come from a place of purpose. And it was going to come from a place of how do I want to be remembered as opposed to how am I going to make money? Mm, that and the money so follows powerful. when you sort of figure out your purpose. I hope I answered the question, but you, 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 you prompted something me to say all of that, but hopefully I answered the question. No, that is, I mean, you're on fire right now, Ray. Like <laughs> seriously killing it. Um, like out of, out of all those three books, like, you know, you talked about living in the now, right? Living, yeah. living in the now. And I think what a lot of people forget and, and tend to try to avoid is challenges, right? Mm. Um, especially in the now because it hurts and it's uncomfortable. Um, in our minds, we tend to go, uh, you know, the, the path of least resistance. Um, yeah. But I feel like the challenges that we face, and I'm just starting to learn this stuff now. It's a couple of books that I'm reading is that the challenges and in, in, in some of the obstacles that we face currently are the, are the things that are going to develop us or, or, yeah. or, or what is going to um, strengthen us, that is going to make us stronger, that is going to uh, get us to that success. Like we, the, the, the quickest way to success is, is through all that other crap, right? You have to go through it to yeah. get to the other side. And yeah. And that's what I'm learning right now. Like, I feel like everything that happens in your life, like it pops up, boom, 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 boom. Like, oh my God, you know, it's life, you know, crazy stuff happens. It's there for a reason. Like, I believe totally that the universe gives you what you can handle and it's testing you. It's testing you. It's like, uh, what was it? I just read a quote the other day. I think it was a millionaire mind, um, that yeah. it is, you know, all this stuff is like the, the, um, uh, uh, boot camp for success, right? You have to go through the boot camp to get to yep. success and boot camp's yep. going to be all the crap, the depression, the obstacles, yeah. the breakups, the, 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 the laying off the whatever problems that you may be facing. That's your boot camp, And it is up to you to get through that challenge and to get to the other side of that. And to, it's testing you to see if you're worthy of success. Mm. That's good. I like that because you, you're right. These challenges or obstacles or circumstances if you don't pay attention to it and if you don't let it consume you, you can allow, and this kind of goes back to this whole surrender experience, but you just surrender to that this is part of the journey and you were meant to learn something from this. You were meant to hear a message. You were meant to pivot. Like it wasn't meant for me to live in the Middle East where it's probably not a good idea for me to live in, <laughs> in the Middle East. Um, it wasn't a good idea for me to be so far away from my family and my, you know, my support system, my friends and so forth. And, you know, so at the time it sucked, but in retrospect, it's like you, you have to pay attention and mm -hmm. learn from these moments. No, absolutely. You got to learn something. You got to take something from it. And I feel like people underestimate how powerful they are, right? Like we are, uh, don't get me started, uh, but we are very powerful spiritual beings, right? Like, mm. so I believe we are here on this earth and we are capable of all things we put our minds to. Um, we are stronger than what we think we are and people underestimate their, their talents, their, yeah. th what they can do. And yeah. You can you can do whatever you want. Just put your mind to it. Get through the crap. Go through the crap. Get to the other side and just keep going. Um, do you do you mention this at all in your in your new book? Yeah, it's so <laughs> you know it's interesting. My book is not just another branding book. It's not just another entrepreneurial book. It's not even an autobiography. Um, it's not a personal development or spiritual book. And yet it will touch upon all of those things hmm. because for me, branding, it, 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 there's some mindset that goes along with branding 
there's, uh, at least for me, and I think what di distinguishes me from many of the other branders and, uh, uh, or agencies or what are professions is that uh, because I am passionate about spirituality and personal development, that's why I've attracted um, my earlier years a lot of people in this field, in the personal development field. I branded a lot of people in that field. Um, so I think it will touch upon all of those things, including authenticity, including um, paying attention to these obstacles and opportunities or these obstacles as opportunities because I lived it. And I think a lot of us, you know, present company included, I'm sure we, we've all lived certain aspects. The content might be same from person to person, but uh, I, can, I can certainly say that I've experientially lived the, some really dark moments in my life um, and lived kind of trying to get out of those moments and on the other side of that. And I think there's a duality going. I think there's a contrast that is constantly happening. And I think the, the aspiration or goal, at least for me, is to always um, – be paying attention to how can I learn from these things that are in contrasting things that aren't as positive in my life um, to focus on the things that are serving me and are fulfilling and are rewarding. Mm. Showing gratitude, right? That's right. That's right. Love it. Uh, you mentioned authenticity quite a bit and we can all probably assume that you are very authentic. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean to you? Like what, what, what does it mean to be authentic or uh, authentic you know I like to use I like to use a lot of plain English definitions when I use words particularly when they're used a lot or maybe for some people it might be a word that they've heard before but I like to use a simple definition to maybe even break through the clutter of hearing this word uniquely or hearing this word for the first time but uh, anyway, my plain English definition of authenticity is 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 pretty much the alignment between who you say you are and um, and how you actually are. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, everything that you say, what you do, and how you behave, uh, and how you look is consistent with who you are. Who is Re Perez? Mm. <laughs> That is a, a, a layered question. <laughs> and interestingly, so there's many different ways to answer it. For, every, for all of us, there's many different ways to answer that question in context of the conversation that you're in. So, for example, you know, I, most people would relate to who is Reaper Perez, who is what I do for a living. Me being a CEO, an entrepreneur, a branding consultant, a branding strategist. But... Um, you know, uh, in my family, I'm a brother, I'm a son, I'm a, you know, whatever. So, but at the, aside from all the labels, you know, like, or I was just saying, I was just in the Philippines. I'm Reaperez is an American <laughs> in America. I'm a Filipino. <laughs> so it's like, you know, listen, if you put aside all the societal identifiers at the end of the day, who I am is love, who I am is Someone who wants other people to not live their life in fear, someone who want someone who believes in um, that everything in our life is meant for a higher purpose, and so everything I do is sort of around that of fulfilling on that as a as a point of view in life. Mm. We, we all come from love. I love and, that, man. That's like a, an excellent answer. Like that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, dude. Like, I think it's, I think it's great. Like, if, you know, the first word that pops in your head when you think about who Re is deep down in, in, in your spirit is love. Yeah. Like, that's, I mean, you hit it right on the head. I mean, you know, what's funny is that you were talking about left brain, right brain earlier in the show. 
and I just had Steve Young on the show uh, a while ago. His episode oh, just yeah. aired. Yeah, he was at Cadre too, and he talked about an exercise that he did. Um, if you take a, a pencil and you write with your right hand or a pen, and uh, let's just say, for example, uh, you know, write your why. Like, what is your why? You take your yeah. right your right hand. You you'll write an answer. You put the pen in your left hand. It'll be a completely totally different answer. It's nuts. Like, and it's, it's the difference between your left brain, right brain, right? The creativity right. side of it. And I, I, I called bullshit on it. And I was like, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> I did it and it was totally different. And I was like, oh my God. First off, I couldn't read it because it was my left hand, but it was like, you know, it was definitely a different answer. It was like insane. It was like, uh, I think my right, uh, I, my why was to, um, you know, find, um, you know, help people find their why. And then my left was just like, enjoy enjoy who I am. And it was like, what? Yeah. you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's nuts how the brain works. I mean, the yeah. different compartments, I mean, we are just now learning, um, about the different, you know, different parts of the brain, how it functions, what's the best diet to use to get the, the, the best optimum, uh, performance from your mind. I mean, it's insane. Like we, we still don't know a whole lot about the brain. I think we're in very, I think we're in the infant stages of actually learning uh, about it. I mean, besides you know, what science and, and, um, biology has already taught us, but as far as like, um, what is it? I, I learned the, what was it? The like Alzheimer's, um, like it, a lot what of it's, Alzheimer's. Yeah. Disease? Yeah. It will like a lot of it's rooted with your d dental hygiene, right? So because it's right oh. there, um, uh, the, the better, the better care you take for your mouth, like the, the bacteria and stuff won't seep back into your brain, like into your brain cavities. I didn't it's, know that. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, man. Like, yeah, I can't, I think it was, I think it was, was I talking to, I think I might've been talking to, uh, Steve about that too. I think he was bringing that up. He sounds it, like someone that would be pretty adept and knowledgeable of that topic. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's pretty crazy. I mean, so before we get off into a rabbit hole, um, on health, what, what, <laughs> what else can people like, what's the, what's the title of your book and what can we expect? Uh, yeah. So a little preview, so depending on when this airs. Um, so the title of the book is, uh, is why, excuse me, <laughs> we, I'm clearly in the, in the, uh, final stages of it. So the title of the book is your brand should be gay, even if you're not, mm. and then the subtitle is it's the, uh, the ultimate guide to creating an authentic brand. What inspired that title? You know, a few things, because if you think about it, the title, it just so happens to be that I, <clears throat> excuse me, it just so happens to be that I'm a gay man. But the book is not even about being gay. But what it did do, the title of the book, I would presume, if you're hearing, if you're meeting me for the first time on this interview, I would presume that it triggered something in your mind. It either piqued your interest or it offended you or it, uh, whatever, whatever the emotional reaction is provoked a response. It broke through the clutter and it either intrigued you to want to learn more or it repelled you to move on your merry little way. And that's what being an authentic brand does. That's what being authentic does is when you're just doing you and you're being exactly who you are and who you're not, whether you're running a business, whether you're an entrepreneur, or whether you're just a human being on this planet, as long as you're just doing you, that's all you can do. And people are going to love you. People are going to hate you. It doesn't matter because you are on your own journey of living your life authentically. And so it's this line of thinking that uh, I was like, well, let me teach. Let me use a title that one puts me out there. Not because people need to know that I'm gay in order to, to know that I'm a great branding person, but <clears throat> at the same time, I've never and, and to be honest, Trey, I've actually never really <clears throat> been so overt about it. It's not like I'm hiding, but it's not a conversation. That's like an aspect of, of all of who I am. And I already told you who I am. I'm, I'm love. So for me, uh, talking about sexual preference is like one fraction of who I am. 
<clears throat> so not that I hide it, not that I promote it, but this way I decided I'm going to use the title of this book to actually put myself out there and to actually make a declaration that I know that people are going to either hate me or love me. And I'm absolutely a hundred percent okay with that. And that's what I want other people for other people as well. I want other people to be confidently unapologetically who they are in life and in business. <clears throat> so that's what inspired it is to get attention to get so that people can hear the message that I'm trying to convey. Be authentic. I mean, how else can you, I mean, how many other titles did you have? I mean, that, I mean, <laughs> that's it right there, bro. Like, you know, yeah. I love it. Um, yeah. was it, were you, were you nervous about using that? You know, for like maybe 30 seconds <laughs> I was, because I was like, oh, that's not really about. But you know, it's interesting if you think about it. It's like the word "gay" has um, it has a double meaning. I mean, are you saying your brand should be happy? Or, you know, if anything, it's like that's the power of words. Mm -hmm. Like we, there's a word that's thrown on our lap, and it triggers all these emotions. And yeah, whatever. So anyway, that was the <laughs> sort of thought process. But um, well, I can see it like triggers emotion in you. Like, yeah, I can see your passion in it, right? Like, I can see, <laughs> I can see like you wanting to truly want to help other companies rebrand their their image, right? Like to bring that authenticity out in them. And if you know you're you're working on it, I don't know when you plan on releasing this book, but I mean, like, it's going to help other people. It's going to help people be authentic, right? And you're leading by example, right? You're you're, you're you titled this. Um, the way that you wanted it, that you way you wanted to, and what you're, you know, you're, you're passionate about who you are, right? Your, your love yeah. and you're trying to portray that and you're trying to show that and people pick up on pick up, you know, they pick up on that kind of stuff, right? They, they pick up on the truth. They pick up on fake, fake shit. You know, it's, it's just, that's true. I mean, you, <clears throat> you have to be authentic because people can read through, especially in business. Like you can tell when somebody's just trying to sell you something and, and they're just grimy about it. And they're just like, you know, just, Un, untrue right like i mean yeah. it's very easy but like with you for there's not one iota of being fake in your story in your brand whatever uh and i think people will pick up on that and i think you're gonna have nothing but success with this book i appreciate that brother um so you know what what's one area that you're struggling with in, in branding that that would help you out that would help others out um real quick what's one area that i'm personally struggling with branding Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, because I've done so much personal development, I don't relate to it as a struggle, but, uh, so I'll re but the, my response to your question is something that I'm wrestling with is, uh, there's an expansion of my brand. And this is actually probably one of the top questions that I get when a lot of clients hire me or whatever is the distinction between a company brand and a personal brand. And so I have both, I, but mostly I have a company brand. So I decided to name my branding agency, Branding for the People. And it's not Re Perez brand consulting firm, it's Branding for the People, because I wanted to build a business brand, a company brand that was for the clients, for the people. Naturally, because I also do a lot of speaking, and I teach around the world on branding. Uh, I'm associated, I'm synonymous with that brand, that company brand, and I'm also distinct because uh, there's a whole set of other experience and wisdom and ideas and passions and interests that are above and beyond, I think, what my agency um, is out to, to provide. And I want you to hear that in a way. It's like not that it's like a secondary version, uh, an inferior version of my personal brand. It's just distinct. It's a different context. And so I think me as a personal brand, I have other interests um, besides just branding because it's about authenticity. And I think that this message is meant to be heard through the youth, um, through all sorts of uh, groups and societies, not just entrepreneurs and business owners. And that's why I think it's an expansion for me. And I'm just sort of wrestling with how do I bring all of that together and appeal to the different audiences that I'm in, 
that I believe that I've intended to, to speak to. Uh, I, I've never been in this place before, but the opportunity presented itself and I'm surrendering to that, uh, those opportunities. <laughs> ah, that's awesome, man. Uh, how can people connect with you? Yeah. So, um, I guess a good starting point is just branding for the people, uh, com. But, um, I'm on the usual suspects of Facebook and mostly Facebook and LinkedIn and, uh, Instagram. Um, usually you can either find me by Re Perez or, or branding for the people. And to be clear, my, the spelling of my name is re R E Perez. Um, so sometimes people accidentally look up Ray Perez, R E Y. <laughs> And uh, there's another person that does branding, and his name is Ray Perez. So that's not me. Really? The person you want to be looking for is it's, Re, R E Perez. Awesome. That's crazy. <laughs> like R E, like remix. Exactly. Exactly. Remix. Re, remix, rebrand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Re, like when it's all said and done, man, like what do you want to, what, what, what's your legacy? You know, I think for me is that whoever I interact with personal or business that I leave people or inspire people to become better than to become a higher version of themselves. Mm. You have definitely done that today, brother. His name is re Perez. He is reinventing authenticity re man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been, it's been an honor. Appreciate you, Trey. Thanks for having me, man. I want to say thank you to Ree for hanging out and just being authentic and having a great conversation. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. That was amazing. If you want to connect on any social media platform, you can do that on Facebook at Trey Downs, on Instagram at TDowns80, and on Twitter at Downs Trey. Hit me up. Go to yourspareyourself.com. Leave me a message. I can't wait to talk to you guys next week. Have a great week and keep on grinding. I'll talk to you guys later.